Welcome to Wind Chime Story Time. I'm David. And I'm Reese. Today we continue the stories of Raggedy Ann and Raggedy Andy with the spinning wheel. Let's listen to the dolls as they get up to some mischief before bedtime. One night, after all the household had settled down to sleep, Raggedy Andy sat up in bed and tickled Uncle Clem. Uncle Clem twisted and wiggled in his sleep until finally he could stand it no longer and awakened. I dreamed that someone told me the funniest story, said Uncle Clem. But I cannot remember what it was. I was tickling you, laughed Raggedy Andy. When the other dolls in the nursery heard Raggedy Andy and Uncle Clem talking, they too sat up in their beds. We've been so quiet all day, said Raggedy Andy. Let's have a good romp. This suggestion suited all the dolls, so they jumped out of their beds and ran towards Raggedy Andy's and Uncle Clem's little bed. Raggedy Andy, always in for fun, threw his pillow at Henry, the Dutch doll. Henry did not see the pillow coming towards him, so he was knocked head over heels. Henry always said, Mama, when he was tilted backward or forward. And when the pillow rolled him over and over, he cried, Mama, Mama, Mama. It was not because it hurt him. For you know, Santa Claus always sees to it that each doll he makes in his great workshop is covered with a very magical wish, and this wish always keeps them from getting hurt. Henry could talk just as well as any of the other dolls when he was standing up, sitting, or lying down. But if he was being tipped forward and backward... All he could say was, Mama! This amused Henry as much as it did the other dolls. So when he jumped to his feet, he laughed and threw the pillow back at Raggedy Andy. Raggedy Andy tried to jump to one side, but forgot that he was on the bed, and he and Uncle Clem went tumbling to the floor. Then all the dolls ran to their beds and brought their pillows and had the jolliest pillow fight imaginable. The excitement ran so high, and the pillows flew so fast. The floor of the nursery was soon covered with feathers. It was only when all the dolls had stopped to rest, and put the feathers back into their pillowcases, that Raggedy Andy discovered he had lost one of his arms in the scuffle. The dolls were worried over this and asked, What will Marcella say when she sees that Raggedy Andy has lost his arm? We can push her up his sleeve, said Uncle Clem. Then, when Raggedy Andy is taken out of bed in the morning, Marcella will find his arm is loose. It has been hanging by one or two threads for a day or more said Raggedy Andy. I noticed the other day that sometimes my thumb was turned clear around to the back, and I knew then that the arm was hanging by one or two threads, and the threads were twisted. Uncle Clem pushed Raggedy Andy's arm up through his sleeve, but every time Raggedy Andy jumped about, he lost his arm again. This will never do said Raggedy Ann. Raggedy Andy is lopsided with only one arm, and he cannot join in our games as well as if he had two arms. Oh, I don't mind that, laughed Raggedy Andy. Marcella will sew it on in the morning, and I'll be all right, I'm sure. Perhaps Raggedy Ann can sew it on now, suggested Uncle Clem. Yes, Raggedy Ann can sew it on, all the dolls cried. 
She can play Peter Peter Pumpkin Eater on the toy piano, and she can sew. I will gladly try, said Raggedy Ann, but there are no needles or thread in the nursery, and I have to have a thimble so the needle can be pressed through Raggedy Andy's cloth. Marcella always gets a needle from Mama, said the French doll. I know, said Raggedy Ann, but we cannot awaken Mama to ask her. The dolls laughed at this, for they knew very well that even had Mama been awake, they would not have asked her for a needle and thread, because they did not wish her to know they could act and talk just like real people. Perhaps we can get the things out of the machine drawer? Henry suggested. Yes, cried Susan. Let's all go get the things out of the machine drawer. Come on, everybody. And Susan, although she had only a cracked head, ran out of the nursery door, followed by all the rest of the dolls. Even the tiny little penny dolls clicked their china heels upon the floor as they followed the rest. And Raggedy Andy, carrying his loose arm, thumped along in the rear. Raggedy Andy had not lived in the house as long as the others, so he did not know the way to the room in which the machine stood. After much climbing and pulling, the needle and thread and thimble were taken from the drawer and all raced back again to the nursery. Uncle Clem took off Raggedy Andy's waist, and the other dolls all sat around watching while Raggedy Ann sewed the arm on again. Raggedy Ann had only taken two stitches and she began laughing so hard she had to quit. Of course, when Raggedy Ann laughed, all the other dolls laughed too. For laughter, like yawning, is very catchable. I was just thinking, said Raggedy Ann. Remember way, way back, all a long, long time ago, I sewed this arm on once before? She asked Raggedy Andy. I do remember now that you mention it, said Raggedy Andy, but I cannot remember how the arm came off. Tell, Tell us about, about it. it, all the dolls cried. Let's see, Raggedy Ann began. Your mistress left you over at our house one night, and everyone had gone to bed. We went up into the attic. Oh yes, I do remember now. Raggedy Ann laughed. We played with the large whirly gig. Yes, Raggedy Ann said. The large spinning wheel. We held on to the wheel and went round and round. And when we were having the most fun, your feet got fastened between the wheel and the rod which held the wheel in position. And there you hung, head down. I remember you were working the pedal and I was sailing around very fast, said Raggedy Andy. And all of a sudden, the wheel stopped. We would have laughed at the time, Raggedy Ann explained to the other dolls, but you see, it was quite serious. My mistress had put us both to bed for the night, and if she had discovered us way up in the attic, she would have wondered how in the world we got there. So there was nothing to do but get Raggedy Andy out of the tangle. But you pulled me out all right. Raggedy Andy laughed. Yes, I pulled and I pulled until I pulled one of Raggedy Andy's arms off, Raggedy Ann said. And then I pulled and I pulled until finally his feet came out of the wheel and we both tumbled to the floor. Then we ran downstairs as fast as we could and climbed into bed, didn't we? Raggedy Andy laughed. Yes, we did, Raggedy Ann replied. And when we jumped into bed, we remembered that we had left Raggedy Andy's arm lying up on the attic floor. So we had to run back up there and get it. Remember, Raggedy Andy? Yes, wasn't it lots of fun? Indeed it was, Raggedy Ann agreed. Raggedy Andy wanted to let the arm remain off until the next morning, but I decided it would be better to have it sewed on. 
just as it had been when Mistress had put us to bed. So, just like tonight, we went to the pincushion and found a needle and thread, and I sewed it on for him. There, Raggedy Ann said, as she wound the thread around her hand and pulled so that the thread broke near Raggedy Andy's shoulder. It's sewed on again, good as new. Thank you, Raggedy Ann, said Raggedy Andy, as he threw the arm about Raggedy Ann's neck and gave her a hug. Now we can have another game, Uncle Clem cried as he helped Raggedy Andy into his waist and buttoned it for him. Just then, the little cuckoo clock on the nursery wall went, <coughs> The little door opened, and the little bird put out his head and cried, <coughs> No more games, Raggedy Ann said. We must be very quiet from now on. The folks will be getting up soon. Last one in bed is a monkey, cried Raggedy Andy. There was a wild scramble as the dolls rushed for their beds, and Susan, having to be careful of her cracked head, was the monkey. So Raggedy Andy, seeing that Susan was slow about getting into her bed, jumped out and helped her. Then, climbing into the little bed which Uncle Clem shared with him, he pulled the covers up to his eyes, and, after pretending to snore a couple of times, he lay very quiet thinking of the kindness of his doll friends about him, until Marcella came and took him down for breakfast. And all the other dolls smiled at him as he left the room, for they were very happy to know that their little mistress loved him as much as they did. Thanks for listening to Wind Chime Storytime. Read and color along with all the Raggedy Ann and Raggedy Andy stories on our website. Have a pleasant day. And the next adventure's on the way. Bye. Bye.